8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. While the Russians make slow progress on the third day of their invasion of Finland, the German press has suddenly discovered that Sweden is to blame for the war, or at least the Swedish foreign minister, Richard Sondler. The Felkischer Beobachter, the leading Nazi newspaper, says that if it had not been for Sondler's bad advice, Finland would have made a timely understanding with Russia and Germany. Dispatches from Berlin this morning indicated that there was a good deal of sympathy with Finland there. But tonight the tone is different, though Finland is represented as only the victim of Sondler acting for England. The newspaper Bersen Zeitung says that Sondler worked in Finland for England's interest and never lost a chance to show his antipathy to Germany. And the Essener National Zeitung, regarded as the organ of Field Marshal Goering, added that Sondler has long been the middleman of League of Nations ideologists such as Anthony Eden. The German radio tells the same story tonight. Sondler prevented Finland from reaching an understanding with Germany. Now, in a totalitarian country, this sort of thing does not happen by accident. When several German papers simultaneously discover that Sweden is the culprit, it's a sign that some sort of pressure is likely to be put on Sweden. Many observers have expected that after the Russians had overrun Finland, they would discover that their security was mentioned, menaced by the intolerable provocations of Sweden, but the Germans are pinning the blame on Sweden when the Finnish war has just begun. Germany draws much of its iron ore from Swedish mines and might not feel too comfortable if the Russians occupied Finland and got within easy reach of those mines. Perhaps the Germans want to get some sort of control over Sweden themselves before that time comes. So far as the fighting goes, the Finns claim they have stopped the Russians with a counterattack in Karelia and do not yet admit the loss of Petsamo on the Arctic Ocean, though the fighting there is very heavy. Herbert Elliston, reporting from Helsinki over this network earlier this evening, said the Finns claimed to have shot down 23 Russian planes. Air raids continued today on Helsinki and other Finnish towns, but so far the Russian Air Force doesn't seem to be making very effective use of its numerical superiority of something like 30 to 1. A later report from Mr. Elliston says that the weather at present is in favor of the Finns. It's raining and the lakes have not yet frozen over, which makes slow going for Russian tanks. There have been reports today that at several points the Russians attempted to drop troops behind the lines by parachutes, one of their favorite peacetime maneuvers, but that such attacks were repulsed. The Stooge, the Stooge governed the Finnish communists at Terioki, just inside the border, has signed a treaty of friendship and mutual assistance with Russia. In the treaty, everything is ceded to Russia that the real Finnish government refused to give up. The Hanga naval base, the fortified frontier, and all the rest of it. And the Russians, of course, recognize this group as the government of Finland. Mr. Elliston reported that the Finns say that not a single member of that group had been in Finland for 20 years till they came in behind the Red Army. That may be an exaggeration, but certainly its president, Otto Kusinen, has long had a good job in Moscow. In Washington, President Roosevelt urged a moral embargo on the sale of war materials to nations which bombard and machine gun civilians. This was specially addressed to American airplane manufacturers who have sold about a million dollars worth of goods to Russia this year. The movement for the recall of our ambassador from Moscow as a gesture of protest, which Mr. Warner reported from Washington earlier this evening, was supported tonight by former President Hoover in a statement from Palo Alto. Meanwhile, the administration's policy has come under criticism from two sides. The communists blame President Roosevelt for the war on the ground that he supported Finland, and the Republican representative Knutson of Minnesota blames him for it because, he said... Russia is a Frankenstein which the administration helped create. He probably meant Frankenstein's monster, not Frankenstein. No news of the war in the West except the rumor that the Pope was going to ask for a Christmas truce. This was denied in authoritative quarters at the Vatican, the spokesman remarking somewhat pointedly that an armistice in the naval war would be meaningless when the sea is full of floating mines. The best-known casualty of the Russo-Finnish war to date is George Bernard Shaw, Mr. Shaw was quoted in a London paper today, and I has not denied it, as saying that Russia is only defending her own security and that Finland would not have resisted if she had not counted on American support. No man has written more eloquently than Shaw in the past in defense of truth and of the freedom of the human spirit. If what he says now about Russia and Finland is true, then all the best of what he's been telling us for the last 50 years is false, or vice versa. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.